all of the resources at our disposal. If we stick to a policy of ensuring that at least as far as public finance is concerned, there is no impunity. Positive signals in the national economy, presidential enabling business council holds in Abuja, and the message to Nigerians is for high level transparency. The delay in our justice delivery system is of great concern to me. Power the judiciary for better performances, Chief Justice of Nigeria tells state governments. We want to ensure that we preserve the value of our currency because we know that if there is no stability in our currency, it affects us negatively. Senate begins the screening of nominees for Monetary Policy Committee and Deputy Governor of the Apex Bank. Plus, Nigeria's president gets the commendation of ECOWAS president on the fight against terrorism and corruption. Good evening and welcome to NTA Network News. I'm Sheung Olagunju. We're reaching you live from the nation's capital, Abuja. And reading with me tonight is Hingino John Adams in Lagos, or Sadia Digi is in Sokoto. Thank you for joining us. With consistent positive signals in the nation's economy, the need for Nigerians to maintain a high level of transparency in their dealings has been stressed by Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo as he declared open the 7th Presidential Enab Enabling Business Environment Council's meeting in Abuja. State House correspondent Jide Onifadi reports. Since the inauguration of the Presidential Enabling Business Environment Council in July 2016, which is chaired by Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo. A number of reforms have been undertaken to address the challenges. Rail and road transportation, port services, immigration matters, and other obstacles faced particularly by small and medium-sized enterprises are considered matters of high priorities. Here, at this meeting, some members of the executive speak glowingly about the successes recorded by the policies. So there's reforms that are aligning and coming together to create that conducive business environment that will ensure that Nigeria grows. Government various policies on the economy, such as the Economic Recovery and Growth Plan, and the ease of doing business are considered as irresponsible for an upward trajectory presently being experienced in the economy. The essence of the quarterly business meeting is for stakeholders to consistently rub minds to review these policies for efficiency. But most of all, with all of the resources at our disposal, if we stick to a policy of ensuring that at least as far as public finance is concerned, there is no impunity and that we hold people to account, I'm absolutely confident that this country has everything that it takes to really make the kind of progress uh, that we deserve to make uh, as a nation. The Nigerian economy is regarded as the biggest on the African continent, and therefore issues relating to aid are often of great concern to all, even beyond the shores of the country. From the banquet hall of the State House, Jide Onifade, NT News. Still on the economy, President Mohamed Buhari has been commended by members of the Senate Committee on Banking, Insurance and other financial institutions for his high-caliber nominations for appointments of Deputy Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria and members of the Monetary Policy Committee. National Assembly correspondent Dennis Adegunloye reports that this was during the screening exercise of the nominees. The senators had at last week's plenary acknowledged the crucial roles that the deputy governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria and members of the Monetary Policy Committee of the Apex Bank play in the nation's economic growth. And to this end, the legislators agreed to lift the suspension of screening of nominations, at least for this particular exercise. The senior special assistant to the president on National Assembly Matters, Senator Ita Enang, conveyed the president's gratitude to the Senate for their statesmanship. And again, I know that on the with the magnanimity of the Senate, you will extend this goodwill to other nominees. The nominees were taken up on what they intend to bring to the table in terms of ideas to take the Nigerian economy to its pride of place in the Committee of Nations and improve on the welfare of Nigerians and vulnerable groups. We want to ensure that we preserve the value of our currency because we know that if there's no stability in our currency, it affects us negatively. And we want to act as, you know, um, advisor to the federal government. What I really enjoy 
when I was going through your CV, is on the issue of the women, women empowerment. In 2012, the bank team did fit to make me the director of strategy. That's the chief strategy officer of the bank. And my mandate then, because we had just come out of the financial crisis, my mandate was to ensure that we come up with a comprehensive strategy framework. I believe you are one of those that, as an insider, if there's a, a space to do this kind of assignments, we should always look inward. Let me first of all thank the president by bringing one of the insiders. The committee will collate its findings and reports recommendations with respect to confirmation of the nominees to plenary. From the National Assembly, Dennis at Digan NTA News. To judiciary matters now, state governments have been told to assist in the stability of the nation's polity by empowering the judicial arm of government for better performance. Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Walter Onoge, made the appeal at the opening of a five-day national refresher course for judges and cadres in the country. Femi Okeo reports. As in most cases in Nigeria, all eyes are always at the center at the federal level, whether the economy politics, and fight against corruption. And so it is with the judiciary, as if to say that the administration of justice is only for the federal level. This over-concentration at the center, the Chief Justice of Nigeria says, has brought about the weakening of the judicial structures at the state levels, which, in his own opinion, should even be stronger, being the closest to the people. So, when judges and caddies from across the states and federal courts converged in Abuja for their annual refresher course, it provided an opportunity for the Chief Justice of Nigeria to call for a closing of the gap in terms of independence, equipping, and financing of the third arm of government in states. The delay in our justice delivery system is of great concern to me, as it must be to you all. This unacceptable situation inevitably dictates the need for a thorough and comprehensive reform of our justice sector. The course is also looking at enhancing the quality of judicial services provided across the country. We must continuously improve judicial performance in recognition of the need to be accountable. In Abuja, Femi Okewu, NTN News. Staying with the judiciary, an FCT High Court setting in Abuja has adjourned to April 19 and 20 for the continuation of trial in the case of Mariam Sander, who is facing trial for allegedly killing her husband, Biliamin Ubedlo. Chukunon Songwabwezi reports that the case was adjourned to give the prosecution team enough time to produce all its witnesses on the next adjourned date. At Monday's resumed hearing, the defense counsel, Joseph Daudu S.A.N., argued that the prosecution team erred in law to have allowed the Nigeria police force to prefer the charge against the accused instead of the attorney general of the federation. Hence, the need for the courts to treat the preferred charge as no charge. A submission the prosecution counsel, James E. Dachaba, faulted for lack of merit. The presiding judge, Justice Yusuf Halilu, therefore informed the court that the arguments of the defense and prosecution counsel on the procedure of filing a charge will be considered in his ruling and as such should not store the day's proceedings. However, the inability of the prosecution team to produce one of its main witnesses led to the adjournment of the case to April 19th and 20, 2018 for continuation of trial. We are ready to go on, but it's just that we don't want to work on what we call a nullity situation. That means things are not yet ready and the rush for speed you then uh, go and spoil everything you've done from the beginning. So as things stands, you can even see that when they said they should produce the witnesses, even though we were ready, the witnesses were nowhere to be found. So it boils down to what I'm saying. Be ready before you say you're ready. The one we want, his testimony to be corroborated by those other subsequent ones, is the one that was here in the morning. I was made to understand, but later, for, although he complained that uh, he was, I don't know, whether traveling or whatever, when he came earlier. So I may not know exactly his reason now, because he is not a police officer. I've told the court, these are people that uh, are direct friends of the disease. 
and I expect them at least to cooperate with us. The accused Miriam Sanda is standing trial for allegedly stabbing her husband Biliaminu Bello to death in Abuja, Chukunon Sungwabweze, NTN News. Nigeria's vast ungoverned land and land space and coastline border are said to be partly responsible for the emerging security challenges in the country. This was part of the submission of the Nigeria Immigration Service at the four-day leadership in security calls in Abuja. Defense correspondent Ismail Musa reports. In recent, Nigeria had to grapple with security challenges which were alien to the country, consequently posing threat to lives and property. Apart from rising to the challenge, security agencies are perfecting strategies, including training to stem the tide. This leadership security course is one of such measures. Experts here see migration and movement of small and light weapons into Nigeria as contributing factors. With a vast and ungoverned coastline of about 853 kilometers and a cumulative border measuring about 4,900 kilometers, Interagency cooperation, they say, is needed. Despite limited resources, the Nigerian Immigration Service says it will continue to develop strategies to achieve its mandate. There is therefore an urgent need to retool the control and patrol resources of the service as the trained workforce is ever raring to go for effective patrol of borderlines, their statutory responsibility. It is expected that at the end of the four day course, on the instance of the Peace Building Foundation and the Nigerian Army Resource Center, synergy among security agencies will improve to address emerging challenges. From the Nigerian Army Resource Center, Abuja, Ismail Musa, NTA News. You're watching NTA Network News. Time now to take some messages. The news returns shortly. Stay with us. Get an unfair advantage that puts you in front of everyone else. Be the first to create the latest online trends. Be the first to make the news. 4,000 Naira equals 12.5 gigabytes to upload over 5,000 pictures. Sell to more people faster than anyone else. 500 Naira equals 1 gigabyte for unlimited chatting. Be the first to know. Live on the fast lane and always stay connected to a world on the move. 5,000 Naira equals 15.6 gigabytes for 50 hours of unlimited video calling. Get the unfair advantage powered by Glow Data Unmatched. Also enjoy free YouTube and iPlex. Down Star 777 Hash. The largest data network, Glow, Grandmasters of Data. The President, Muhammadu Buhari, has approved the appointment of chairmen and members for boards of agencies under the office of the Vice President. The agencies are the National Boundary Commission, National Institute for Policy and Strategic Studies, Border Communities Development Agency. The inauguration will be held on Tuesday, 20th March, 2018. Venue is the office of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Conference Hall, Ground Floor, Cheo Shagari Complex, Three Arms Zone, Abuja. Time, 3 p.m. Documentation for chairmen and members for these boards will be held between the hours of 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. All appointees are expected to present their curriculum vitae and means of identification. Notices have been published earlier on Friday 16th March 2018 in Punch and Leadership Newspapers. Olushegun E. Adekunle, Permanent Secretary, General Services Office, announcer. Standards Organization of Nigeria, SON, brings a new lease of life to Nigeria SMEs. SON has put a greater premium on developing standards to improve made in Nigeria products for export. We have developed more standards for products like Sesame, Coco, Gary, and more, courtesy of our accredited state-of-the-art laboratories. In keeping with the federal government's ease of doing business, SON has simplified its processes and turned around time for SOMCAP, MANCAP, and other certification processes. SON has intensified market surveillance, raids, and seizures to reduce substandard products in circulation, and offenders shall be prosecuted. Join SON in reading our nation of substandard products. If you see something, say something. Standards Organization of Nigeria, improving lives through standards. <laughs> Breaking news. 
MTN gives 2,000% bonus for reactivating your MTN SIM. That's right. If you haven't used your MTN SIM for 45 days or more, recharge now and get 2,000% bonus. That's right, 2,000% bonus for your first recharge of every month. Do you know every consumer is a king? Oh yes, every consumer has a right to value of money and right to redress. So when next you are not satisfied with any product or service, complain to the seller or service provider. If you are not satisfied with their response, just come to CPC with proof or other necessary documents. At the CPC, we insist that service providers and producers prioritize consumer protection. As such, we are holding them accountable by ensuring that there are multiple channels by which consumers can file complaints, whether to the service providers, the producers, or the CPCs. Consumer Protection Council is an agency of the federal government of Nigeria charged with the responsibility of protecting consumers' interests. You can call us on our hotlines or send us an email, contact at cpc.gov.ng. CPC, promoting and protecting consumers' interests. CPC. The Management of National Agency for Science and Engineering Infrastructure, NASENI, Federal Ministry of Science and Technology, cordially invites stakeholders, policymakers, and the public to the official commissioning of NASENI Technology Orientation Center, built for the purpose of fast tracking rapid technology and engineering development, collaborative environment for entrepreneurs, SMEs, researchers, academics, students, including indigenous technology. Date Tuesday, 20th March 2018. Time 10 a.m. Venue NASENI Headquarters, Idu Industrial Area, through the train time. Karimo Inidu Abuja, Chairman of Vocation, Dr. Bunmayono, Honorable Minister of Science and Technology, Chief Host, Mohammed Musa Bello, Honorable Minister of the Federal Capital Territory Administration, Engineer Professor Mohammed Sani Haruna, Executive Vice Chairman, Chief Executive Naseni, Announcer. Sabi, we could not plan well, well. Learn correct information about different kind of family planning method. Then they safe and they work well. Up. You and your partner feel plan when in a light to bump the king. Then that well, make you yearn with your partner. Make them sabi say you support modern family planning. Oh, young yeah, waka go color be the better one. We go fit your body today. Cause say we get one way correct for you and your partner. Sabi the correct thing way family planning they do. Follow talk, talk family planning with, with your, your partner. partner. Waka go do family planning. Get it together, get it together. Join and plan your family for tomorrow way better. Now the Federal Ministry of Health they bring on this get it together story. Do you know that the Nigerian police now operates in the best international practices of policing? Do you know that the Nigerian police has been restructured to be more accountable and responsive to all your security challenges? Now, what the police demand from you is your trust, your collaborative efforts by providing necessary information about criminals and their activities in your neighborhood. Be vigilant to achieve our creed as we promise. We shall police the country based on international core values of policing with integrity. We shall ensure that rule of law prevails in our actions and activities. We shall respect diversity, display courage, show compassion, and demonstrate professionalism. We shall operate within the principle of democratic policing. We shall shun corruption and we shall make Nigeria safer and secured under the leadership of IGP Ibrahim Otum Idris. Let the wind of change blowing across the country chase away crime for the benefit of our society. Yes, the Nigerian police says this change must come with peace and tranquility. This message was brought to you by the Public Relations Department of the Nigerian Police Force. <laughs> Thanks for staying with us on the Network News as we kick off this segment from the legislature. 
The House of Representatives Committee on Basic Education has held a public hearing on six bills all geared towards enhancing the standard of education in Nigeria. The bills received support from members of the public, especially the ones seeking to amend the Examination Malpractice Act and the bill for an act to make agricultural science a compulsory subject in secondary schools. National Assembly correspondent Ignatius Onkwa reports of education are certainly not matters to be treated with levity. The attendance at this public hearing clearly underscored that 11 bills have been listed by the House Committee on Basic Education for inputs from members of the public. Four of them were discussed at this first day hearing. Deputy Minority Leader of the House, Chukuka Onyema, who represented the Speaker, stressed the need for a legislation that will enhance the standard of education in the country. We expect that this committee and the officers in the various basic educational institutions will exploit all avenues to realize these goals after this public hearing. For us as a committee, we'll continue to partner with you to ensure that the derivables for the basic education sector will be for the love of country and to the entire people. The bill for an act to amend the Examination Malpractice Act of 2004 to confer the states and federal high courts with jurisdiction to entertain cases of violation of the act was a welcome development for the major players including the West African Examination Council, Joint Admission and Matriculation Board and others. Young persons under the age of 18 years that are liable on conviction to a fine of 100,000 or imprisonment for a term not exceeding three years. The bill for an act to make agricultural science a compulsory subject in secondary schools and the special needs for educational bill which seeks to provide facilities for students with learning disabilities were also supported. Similarly, the bill for an act to amend the Environmental Impact Assessment Act seeking to include host communities in environmental impact assessment process has been presented to the public for inputs by the House Committee on Environment and Habitat. Deputy Minority Leader of the House, Chukuka Onyema, who also read Speaker Yakubu Dogara's message and Chairman of the Committee, Representative Obi Nachidoka, said the amendment is to ensure that those whose lives will be affected by any environmental activity should take part on how best to protect their environment. We're talking about lives here and we see the issues that happens when the right processes are not followed. Both Ministry of Environment, Department of Petroleum Resources and other participants concurred with the proposed amendment. The implementation of the AI Act should be domiciled in the Ministry as proposed in the UB uh, Act. Representative of the Department of Petroleum Resources observed that conduct of environmental assessment process by two bodies, that is, the Federal Minister of Environment and the DPR, should be addressed. From the National Assembly, Ignatius Unquo, NTA News. About 367 visually impaired candidates participated in the 2018 Unified Tertiary Matriculation Examination. Rashidat Mustafa Olagunju reports that just as in 2017, the exercise was through dictation. The exercise is part of efforts by the federal government to provide equal and quality education to all. The candidates using materials such as typewriter, braille and slides express satisfaction with the exercise. The exam is going normal and peaceful. I enjoy the program and the arrangement and the organization of everything. Everything is okay. I like them to employ those that are study special education course for the purpose of marking those that are writing with braille. The exercise which took place in five zones across the country is being closely monitored by the Equal Opportunity Group on the JAMP. JAMP have been very innovative about this. And uh, all the candidates you see here today, they are transport fair with their guides. Each candidate came with a guide that has been paid. By Jam. And they are also being accommodated by Jam. This is the second time the group will be monitoring for the visually impaired persons in Nigeria. Rashidat Mustafa Olagunju, NCA News. In politics, the former Tanzanian president, Dr. Jakaya Mrisho Kikwete, has hinged the success of any national growth and political reforms in Nigeria 
on the ability of the political class to work without tribal or religious sentiment as experienced in his country. He stated this while presenting a paper at the third annual national political summit in Abuja. Political correspondent Abdullahi Garba Burning Kudu reports. The National Political Summit is a creation of a non-partisan group, Safe Democracy Africa, to promote dialogue, build democratic principles, and good governance in the continent. This year's summit has a theme, reforming the Nigerian Federation which way forward, with a Tanzanian former leader as key speaker. He says Nigeria should be guided by its history and peculiarities in achieving reforms taking into consideration its unity as an indivisible country. But we have to remain vigilant, extra vigilant, because religious divisions are deadlier than tribal or racial divisions. Because when you have tri tribal divisions, it is this tribe and against this tribe. But when we have religious divisions, it is the whole country. Because to build strong foundation for our political culture, we seek to emphasize the role of political parties as the agents of political participation, electoral contestation, ideological debate, and the practice of internal party democracy on the continent. Other speakers representing Senate President, Speaker of the House of Representatives, and Bochy State Governor spoke on the need for politics of ideology, internet democracy, and peace building as Nigeria approaches another round of elections. The summit ends on Wednesday. In Abuja, Abdullahi Grababur Nunkudu, NTA News. Still talking politics, the national chairman of the Action People's Party, APP, Ikenga Ugochinyeri, says the party's policy will continue to put Nigeria above every other consideration. He stated this at the public presentation of the newly registered political party, in Abuja. As Nigeria's democracy continues to expand its horizon of operations in the country, the Action People's Party, APP, believes that deepening the democratic space is a responsibility of all Nigerians. Against this backdrop, the national chairman says the party is committed to the entrenchment of positive change in the nation's polity. We have gathered from all nooks and crannies of our dear fatherland to present to Nigerian people the two-point agenda of the Action People's Party, the Big Elephant Party, and the 12 pillars of the agenda with which we shall lead Nigeria back to prosperity. Other speakers, including the party's state chairman, emphasized the need for Nigerians to embrace the values of democracy towards entrenching the desired political culture for the country. In Apuja, Timothy Yusuf, NT News. A former chairman of the House of Representatives Committee on Constituency Outreach, Aisha to Dahiru Ahmed Binani, has defected from the People's Democratic Movement, PDM, to the All Progressives Congress, APC, with over 80,000 supporters. Salihu Abdullahi reports. Team party leaders at the APC Secretariat in Yola, Binani said she opted for APC because of the party's ideology of promoting the true virtues of democracy to Nigerians. The APC government in Nigeria has saved the country from calamity. We are here not for speech making or campaign, but simply to register our intention to the party. I am presenting my humble self, Aisha Tutahiru Ahmed Binani, as a candidate for Adama's central senatorial seat in 2019 election. The chairman of APC in Adamawa State, Ibrahim Bilal, while receiving the new supporters, says the party believed in giving equal opportunity to all members regardless of their status within the party and urged other interesting Nigerians to do the same. On his part, the director general of APC campaign organization in Adamawa State, Abdurrahman Abba, said all aspirants will be given equal opportunity to contest in the 2019 elections. In Abuja, Salihu Abdullahi, NTA News. It's time now to join Hingino in our Lagos Network Centre for more reports. Hello, Hingino, it's over to you. Hello, Hingino, it's over to you. Good evening, and a warm welcome to Lagos. The zero tolerance of the present administration to cross-border crimes is receiving a boost at the semi-land border in Lagos State with the recent arrest of drug barons in possession of 7.5 tons of cannabis. 
This was made possible as a result of collaboration of security operatives at Seme border flank. Mohammed Abdul Kadri completes the story. The controller, Seme Area Command of the Nigeria Customs Service, Aliyu Mohammed, who is the chairman paramilitary agencies at Seme border, attributes the successes so far recorded in anti smuggling war to intelligence gathering and sharing among the agencies. He says, as the lead agency in the enhanced synergy and strategy to sanitize the border, the Nigeria Customs Service, alongside sister agencies, have reduced leakages of contraband goods along the flank. We have interface with the Code of One Security. If you go there now with the Nigerian number, they will stop you. They will collect your document. Immediately, within one minute, they will send the document to us to confirm the genuity of that document. As of now, we have over 50 stolen vehicles from Nigeria that were recovered because of this interface we have with them. His counterpart with the Nigeria Drug Law and Enforcement Agency, NDLA, says the internal control mechanism to take the fight against transborder crimes to the next level are yielding positive results. Again, especially the Nigerian Army and the Nigerian Customs Service as well. So we has some series of transfers. Customs, make, when they make arrests, they transfer to us. On the common challenges facing the services, they identify the need for more funding in Lagos. Muhammad Abdel Kadri, NTA News. A weak training program aimed at producing young, vibrant, and resourceful African leaders have ended in Lagos. Organized by the Young African Leaders Initiative, Yali Regional Leadership Center, Lagos Campus, the program was attended by participants from nine West African countries. Paul Omukago was there. The Regional Leadership Center is renowned for being at the forefront of developing a prestigious network of leaders across critical sectors in Africa. It is in line with this that 129 trainees were grilled on public policy management, entrepreneurship, civil leadership and management. Director General, Administrative Staff College of Nigeria, ASCON, represented by the Director of Studies, Jacob Obaoye, and Director Yali Regional Leadership Center, Dr. Shola Safu Dodu, urged court four graduates to put to practice the knowledge and skills acquired. The program is meant to equip young African leaders with technical, attitudinal, and leadership skills. People like you will not only shape this continent, but the future of the whole world, which are the values that are core to the center. But how will trainees impact their respective communities and countries with what they've learned? If we begin to understand that I can be held accountable for something I've done, then I'll, we all have to start reshaping our thoughts. I used to um, extensify the idea and the knowledge that I gained from Ayali RLC Center. Everything we've learned here shows there are no divisions. It is just Africa. The war on round 29 court four participants are from Nigeria, Ghana, Liberia, the Gambia, Sierra Leone, Togo, Cameroon, Cote d'Ivoire, and Burkina Faso. In Lagos, Paul Omukago, NTA News. You're still watching NTA Network News. It's now time for some messages. The news returns shortly. Please stay with us. Any locations competition is in. Who knows? Six in Lagos, eight in Abuja, and opening another in Abba next week. Who is this guy? No man. Moses was at Chelsea. Then he went to Liverpool. But before that, he was at Crystal Palace 2007. Joined Chelsea 2012. 42 career goals. Mm. <laughs> this coffee is nice. I wonder where it's from. This blend is actually from Brazil. However, coffee originated in Ethiopia in the 13th century. Wow. Connect from any network with Glow MiFi. Share and enjoy 4G data speeds on any 2G or 3G device. Get a Glow 4G MiFi 16 gigabytes of data for only 16,000 Naira. Ah, flavor. Real name is Tunedu Okoli born 1983. Ah, Tunedu. The largest 
Data Network. Glow, Grandmasters of Data. The Vice Chancellor, Namdi Azikiwe University Oka, Professor Joseph Oberendo Ahaniku, FES, on behalf of the Council, Senate, and Congregation, invites the general public to the 2016 2017 12 Convocation Ceremonies of the Namdi Azikiwe University Oka program of events, Monday, 19th of March, 12 noon, interdenominational service at the University Auditorium. Tuesday, 20th of March, 12 noon, presentation of prizes to the best graduating students at the University. University. Wednesday, 21st of March, 1 p.m., convocation lecture by the Honorable Minister of Transportation, Right Honorable Chibuike Amechi at the University Auditorium. Thursday, 22nd of March, 11 a.m., award of first degrees, venue, convocation arena. Friday, 23rd of March, commissioning of newly completed projects and award of postgraduate and honorary degrees. Announcer, Professor Charles O. S. Simone, FAS, DBC Academic and Chairman Ceremonials Committee. The Federal Character Commission, in collaboration with Gambuja Global Consult Limited, cordially invites stakeholders and participants, members of the National Assembly, heads of civil service of the Federation and the Tetsi States, heads and CEOs of Federal Government MDAs, Chairman of Federal Civil Service Commission, and Chairman of the Tetsi State Civil Service Commissions, to its National Stakeholder Seminar, Abuja 2018, theme Inspecting and Monitoring Strategic Processes in recruitment and nationalized spread of staff in MDAs. Date, Thursday, 22nd March 2018. Time, 10 a.m. prompt. Venue, Merit House, adjacent NUC, Aguin Rossin Street, Maitama Abuja. Special guest of honor, Boss G. Mustafa, Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Chairman of the Occasion, Senator Tijanuai Gaura, Chairman, Senate Committee on Federal Character, Co-Chairman of the Occasion, Honorable Idris Ahmed Wasi, Chairman, House Committee on Federal Character, Host, Dr. Shatima Bukar Abba, Acting Executive Chairman, Federal Character Commission, Chief Host, Muhammad Musa Bello, Honorable Minister, FCT. Mohamed Bellotokur, Secretary to the Commission, announcer. President Muhammad Buhari has approved the appointment of chairman and members of the governing boards of parastators of the Federal Ministry of Education, as well as reconstitution of governing councils of two universities that will be inaugurated by the Honorable Minister of Education, Malam Adamu Adamu. Date, Thursday, March 22nd, 2018. Venue, Idris Abdukadri Auditorium, National Universities Commission, number 26, Aguin Yurunsi Street, Maitama Abuja. Time, 12 noon. The chairman and members are currently to report with their updated curriculum vitae for accreditation at the Federal Ministry of Education's conference room on Wednesday, 21st March 2018 from 2 p.m. For further details, refer to Daily Trust, The Nation, Leadership, and the Sun newspapers of March 14, 2018. Desani Echano, Permanent Secretary, announcer. Who wants to answer? Mary? Mary has a toothache. Oh, I see. And who knows why? Because her tooth is too big. No. It might be a hole in her tooth called a cavity. That's why I brush twice a day using Colgate. Imagine this is your tooth and these are food acids that cause cavities. Colgate with calcium and fluoride helps prevent cavities for maximum cavity protection. And now available in a fresh new icy mint gel. Wow. This must be one of Mother Nature's greatest gifts. But there's something else it gives us. When we see such beauty, we want to share it with those we love. That's what LG wants you to see. Just what we see now through our technology. LG OLED TV. Your perfect family is under threat by germs. Infectious diseases are now the world's biggest killer of adults and children. Every day, 16,000 children under the ages of 5 and thousands of adults die from infectious diseases. These infectious diseases are caused by germs. They are everywhere. An average human being comes in contact with over 1 million germs daily. In unclean water, dirty surfaces, in the toilet, on cuts and wounds, on your clothes, germs can cause deadly diseases like typhoid, diarrhea, flu, and cough to protect your family from germs. Use the power of Dettles One Cup Full for surface cleaning in your bathing water, in your laundry water, for first aid to protect your family from up to 100 illness causing germs. Be Dettol Sure. Endorsed by the Nigerian Medical Association. Sensitivity is a short pain which occurs when teeth are exposed to hot, cold, or acidic 
things. Cold water from the fridge would, would trigger off sensitivity. A lot of people would accept anyway and just grin and bear the pain. What I would say to the patient is switch to Sensodyne, make it your daily toothpaste over a period of time would reduce tooth sensitivity. And a lot of them come back to, tell, you know, to thank me, to say that, wow, it's just something so simple. It adds the sparkle back into their life. Whenever pain occurs, you want quick relief. Try Nurofen Express. It goes to the source of pain and gets to work in under 15 minutes. That's why Nurofen Express delivers fast and effective relief. Nurofen Express works at the source of pain fast. Being a mom is great, but when your child has a fever, you don't know what to do. I trust Nurofen for Children to take care of my child's pain and fever. Effective relief you can trust. <laughs> Thanks for staying with us. And now business news. The Central Bank of Nigeria continues to stabilize the foreign exchange market with additional $210 million injected into the system. For more on business news, here is Vivian Idepefo. It's good to have you join us on Business News at this time. The international rating firm Standard & Poor's has affirmed its BB long and short-term sovereign credit ratings on Nigeria. The agency has also assigned a stable outlook on the country. This is coming on the heels of steps taken by the Senate to screen and confirm the nominees of President Muhammad Buhari to fill the post of Deputy Governors of the Central Bank of Nigeria and the four members designate of the Monetary Policy Committee. This is just as the Central Bank of Nigeria says it will hold its first meeting of the MPC this year on April 3rd and 4th. Players in Nigeria's capital market see this having a positive impact on the market. The inability to hold the meeting in January, we saw what happened. You know, you know that makes investors, especially foreign investors, jittery. You know, not having a policy announcement, uh, pronouncement or announcement, it's, it makes the market, you know, it creates a lot of uncertainty in the market. And then that's not good for the market. You know, we need to have confidence in what to expect in the market so that you'll be able to make your analysis in good time, take positions where you want to take positions, uh, and then hit the market and make some good money. Meanwhile, an open market operation maturity of 227.5 billion naira is expected to hit the system this week as the CBN continues its liquidity mop-ups through the open market operations actions. This is in addition to primary market actions slated to hold on Wednesday with the CBN offering a total of 53.9 billion naira. On the equities market, Monday investors traded 327 million shares in 5,000 deals worth 5 billion naira. Market capitalization closed at 14 trillion naira. The all share index dipped by 0.25% to close at 41,830. 2.63 basis points. The financial services sector remains the most traded stocks. Cadbury, Niger Insurance, and Unity Bank were the top losers, while CI Leasing, Unity Capital, and Nymeth ended the day on the top gainers chart. And that's business news for now. The rest of the bulletin in just a moment. The presidency says the private sector will play an advisory role in the National Food Security Council recently announced by President Muhammad Buhari. In a statement, the senior special assistant to the president on media and publicity, Garba Shehu, says the president is aware of the huge interest indicated by the private sector since the composition of the council was announced, as well as the reservation expressed by groups that felt left out. The statement emphasized that the council constituted by the president was more of a think tank that would focus mainly on policy, while various groups from the private sector would be called upon to make sectoral presentations from time to time. The council will be inaugurated by President Buhari on Monday, March 26. 
The general public, particularly the media, have been cautioned against reporting unguarded utterances and comments of politicians that can overheat the polity. The call was made by the Niger State Deputy Governor Ahmed Mohamed Keto against the background of sensational reportage of events in the state and the country. Dauda Mohamed reports. With the release of the 2019 general elections timetable by the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, the political climate in most states in the country has been gathering momentum, leading to utterances by politicians looking for opportunity to improve on their popularity. This scenario has led to utterances by different members of the various political parties, which are oftentimes reported by some sections of the media, leading to heightened tension in the polity, a situation the government of Niger State feels need to be checked. The election year is becoming more visible and some desperate politicians are out to overheat the quality by their utterances and comments. Similarly, Etsunupe and Chairman, Niger State Council of Traditional Rulers, Alhaji Yahaya Abubakar, has advised the media to be cautious in this period of increased political activities and guard against any misrepresentation or character assassination. The monarch stated this at the Wadata Palace Bida while inaugurating the Central Organizing Committee for the 10th Annual Nupe Day celebration. So these words, this statement, this right of this report can fear anything, can put fire to anything, we can burn anybody. So please be very much aware of what you see, what you say, and what you write. The Esunupe's advice to the media followed the recent publication by a national daily where he was wrongly quoted in Mina, Dauda Mohammed, NTA News. Sadia has the next set of stories from Sokoto. It's over to you, Sadia. Welcome to Sokoto. The federal government's drive to boost agribusiness, food security, employment generation, and wealth creation has gained a boost in Sokoto State. This came to the fore when the Zonal Office of the Nigeria Agribusiness and Agro Industry Development Initiative was formally inaugurated at a ceremony attended by Minister of State for Industry, Trade and Investment, Aisha Abakar. Here is the report. It was Federal Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment that created Nigeria Agribusiness and Agro Industry Development Initiative in order to ensure promotion of export trade in agro-industrial products and profitability of agribusiness as well as agro-industry investments. Inaugurating the Zonal Office, Governor of Sokoto State, Amin Waziri Tambual, represented by the Secretary to Sokoto State Government, Professor Bashir Garba, commended federal government for the initiative. He expressed optimism that the initiative will enhance industrial growth and business development of the agricultural sector and put Nigeria in the rightful place. Minister of State for Industry, Trade and Investment, Aisha Abakar, said the initiative is part of efforts by federal government to promote exports of agricultural products and reduce over-dependence on importation. When you're going to export your products, you need to meet a certain standard, you need to have a certain quality, and then you need to have a certain production capacity. Director, Commodities and Product Inspectorate, Federal Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment, Mrs. Obe Opi Ewe called on all stakeholders to support the initiative to enable government diversify the economy. Sultan of Sokoto, Muhammad Saad Abakar III, has called on traditional and religious leaders to work harmoniously with journalists in the interest of peace and national unity. He made the call at a one-day sensitization workshop organized by the Nigerian Union of Journalists Sokoto State Council in collaboration with Sultanate Council. Abdrahman Usman Jibrila has the details. The sensitization workshop with the theme of the role of media in promoting trade or religious tenets in Sokoto State brought together journalists, traditional and religious leaders in order to discuss and share experiences on the proper way of disseminating information 
to promote peace and development. Sultan Saad Abubakar III restated the Sultanate Council's support towards encouraging tolerance among people, especially through the media, with the use of the traditional and religious leaders who are close to the people. Governor Amin Waziri Tambwal, represented by the State Commissioner of Information, Isa Sadiq Achida, said state government remains committed to the promotion of unity among people for national growth and development. Papers were presented on the role of media in promoting religious and traditional tenets, the role of journalists in propagating zakat and endowment activities, a media practice in Islam, origin and concept, and ethical conduct on information dissemination. Chairman Nigeria Union of Journalists, Sokoto State, Isa Abakar Shuni, assured that journalists will continue to carry out their responsibilities professionally. In Sokoto, Abraham Osman Jibrila, NTA News. That's all from Sokoto. Back to Sheung in Abuja for more news. Good evening. Sadia, many thanks. Now, the use of information and communication technology as a strategy to drive effective crime prevention and control is pivotal in contemporary policing. In view of this, the Nigeria Police Force has inaugurated its production studio for enhanced information dissemination of the force headquarters in Abuja. Olaji de Bello reports that the inauguration was by the Inspector General of Police, Ibrahim Idris, alongside the Director General of the Nigerian Television Authority, Yakubu Ibn Mohammed. I commissioned this project for the benefit of the police force and of this company. And I think, just like you said, the initial plan we have was done in secret. You surprised us this, uh, this evening. I want to thank you and your team, obviously, for doing this, and I wish you all the best. And I would like to say that uh, NTA is the number one beneficiary of this studio. If we make our work easier, we don't have to drag the IGP to our office or drag any of his listeners to our office. Once well, while commending the initiative of the force, the Director General of the NTA called on other agencies of government to take a cue as it will enhance seamless sharing and gathering of vital information. This is NTA Network News. Our last break beckons. Join us again. <laughs> Jakarta State Rolling Mill and efforts in reviving the money spinning industry is our focus on NTA Tuesday Live this week. NTA Tuesday Live, incisive, informative, and educative. Don't miss it. What makes a Ninja Mom powerful? I encourage my kids to learn new things. And if they get hurt, I rely on the power of my Dettol's One Cap Full. To fight germs, my family needs protection from germs. I use the power of Dettol's One Cap Full to disinfect surfaces and clothes. I trust the power of Dettol's One Cap Full for bathing. The power of Dettol's One Cap Full protects from up to 100 illness-causing germs. Be a powerful Ninja Mom with Dettol. <coughs> Sore throats, it's often caused by bacteria and viruses. Feels like they're having a party. You need Strepsils. It soothes the pain, plus it fights the germs with two germ-killing actives. Double power in one lozenge. Bye-bye, sore throat. Take Strepsils. Don't you? Three Crowns Milk is low in cholesterol and endorsed by the Nigerian Heart Foundation. Three Crowns Milk. Healthy moms, happy families. I need a product that I can really trust to restore my skin's natural glow. Nivea Natural Fairness Body Lotion containing unique berry extracts and UV protection to restore your natural glow and care for your skin. Hello. Here to pick up your sister? Mommy! Mommy? Wow! Such beautiful glowing skin. Reveal your natural glow with Natural Fairness Body Lotion from Nivea. The winning energy and great Milo taste. Now ready to go. Milo! The winning energy and great Milo taste. Now ready to go. Milo! The winning energy and great Milo taste. Now ready to go. Milo! Hurry up, you're going to be late for school.
What's wrong? I forgot my lunchbox at home. Want to share mine? Mmm, this is yummy. My mom used Bama mayonnaise. What's wrong? I forgot my lunchbox again. You can share mine. What's your excuse? Bama mayonnaise makes it better. Shop, 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 shop. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to introduce. Shop, 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 shop. Let's go, yeah. Hey. Hollandia Chocomoth, oh yeah. Dettol Team is visiting schools to teach children how to protect themselves from diseases. Do you know how we get illnesses like diarrhea, cough, and cold? No! They are spread through germs which are everywhere. You collect germs that cause diseases. You pick up germs from any surface like when you don't wash your hands after going to the toilet while playing. And then you can get sick because of germs. That's why you need to fight germs to stay healthy by washing your hands and taking your bath with Dettol soap to protect from up to 100 illness causing germs. Wash, wash, wash your hands. What you have to do is bath, bath, bath yourself. Dettol soap every day. Wash, wash, wash your hands. Now, sports. Super Eagles to receive their allowances before 2018.